Hi right, guys, welcome to Smile Style Philosophy. I, of course, am the legendary Smiles, Peep Gang. And I'm continuing on with my series of videos explaining to you why the movie Man of Steel was horrible. In my last video, I touched on how they, I was deceived into thinking they were going to change the mythology, but they didn't. They showed kal in certain circumstances that I think took away from the character. I explained to you how the first time we saw him, he was knocked off of his feet by a regular human being, completely negating the fact that he was supposed to have some sort of superpowers. I went into details on that, so you might want to check that out. And then I was trying to explain to you how we saw a scene of kal stealing clothes because his clothes were burnt due to an oil rig explosion that he assisted in helping saving lives, okay? Now... I was explaining in the last video that I thought that that was going to be a good twist into the mythology, meaning that based on what I saw from the Kevin Costner father figure character in the trailer, that Jonathan Kent may not be a good father in this reboot. And that would leave kal to develop into his own man. And maybe at some point, ditching what his father taught him to become a Superman or a better man than his father. But I realized I was giving the writers too much credit and too much creativity because that's not the direction they went in. That's what I thought they were going to do, but they didn't do that. Basically, they just showed kal stealing clothes because he was a dick. And another thing that bothered me about him stealing the clothes was this. They already showed him saving these people on an oil rig, which we can now establish that he is aware that he has powers that regular humans don't have. He's aware of his strength and he got on the oil rig for a reason. So I'm assuming he has his speed. He was distracted when he was on the boat during the oil rig explosion so we can assess that he has super hearing. At this point we can establish that he's aware of most of his powers. Albeit maybe he was struggling with a few of them. I give him that. But for the most part we know that he gets the sense that he has these abilities. All right. But when he stole the clothes, he stole them in regular human fashion. He tiptoed to the back of this truck, grabbed the clothes. He looked around and tiptoed away. I'm thinking to myself, couldn't he just bullet time that? Couldn't he just use the super speed? And if you really had to steal, if you had to, if you had to blemish the character by saying that at some times he steals, which kind of harkens back to the Dark Knight trilogy when Bruce Wayne found himself stealing because he was hungry or whatnot. Maybe it was something of that nature, like they're trying to connect those dots. But even if Superman, even if kal had to steal, you think he would use his super speed to do it. Even if he wasn't aware that he had super speed, we already assessed that he had super hearing because he heard about the distress call of the oil rig. So he wouldn't have to look around and see who was looking. He can hear who was around him and what they were doing and know that it was, the coast is clear. They didn't show none of that. They showed him as a regular human tiptoeing to the back of the truck, grabbing the clothes and tiptoeing away. Like a regular person, he didn't use not one superpower. Watch the movie again and see that scene and you'll see what I'm talking about. He looked like an asshole. So now we have a Kryptonian that falls to his feet when uh, he's pushed by a regular human. And he has to sneak around regular humans. Yeah, so, so, so much superpowers. Anyway, the next aspect, this is what I was supposed to be talking about in this video, but I got cut off short in the last video. After we left Krypton and we were on Earth and it started to time jump and it started to get chronologically disordered, the flaw in that method means we never ever got a chance to establish Smallville or metropolis we did not get a sense of that town or that city we didn't get an attachment to the scenarios 
We didn't get an attachment to the stage. We weren't involved in their plight. See, in the opening scene, we got involved in Krypton. We got to explore Krypton. We got an in-depth, chronologically ordered story of what happened in Krypton. We got a sense of the events that were taking place in Krypton at the time that we were in Krypton. We knew what was going on. On Earth, in Metropolis and in Smallville, we didn't get a sense of any of those towns or cities or those places. We didn't get a sense of what type of place is Smallville. How are the people? What were they doing at the time when kal was there? What was going on? What were the current events? Are the citizens nice? Are they mean? What is it about Smallville? What, like, why is this a cool town? Why are we here? We didn't get that. Same thing with Metropolis. We didn't get an in-depth look into what was going on in Metropolis. We didn't know anything about the citizens. What do they eat? Do they go to a cafe? Do they go to bars? Uh, what happens in Metropolis? The only good scenes we got in Metropolis were the interior of the Daily Planet. We didn't get the sense of the settings. We didn't get a sense of Smallville, nor did we get a sense of Metropolis. Um, once again, it's a reoccurring thing. That the, that the writers assumed that the audience already knew about Smallville and already knew about Metropolis, so they didn't have to reintroduce it. That was a flawed technique. We didn't get an attachment to Smallville, and we didn't get an attachment to Metropolis. To be honest, I, at some points, it was hard to establish where you were at because there was time jumping so much. They were going to random spots from Metropolis to random spots in Smallville at different times, so we did not get a sense of where we were. We were now we're in Smallville. Now we're in Metropolis. Now we're in Metropolis. Now we're in Smallville. Now we're in Canada. Now we're in Metropolis again. Now we're in uh, Smallville again. We didn't get an established shots, uh, an established feel of any of those places like we did in the beginning with the Krypton. They assumed we already knew about Metropolis. They assumed we already knew about Smallville, so they didn't have to explain it. That was a flawed technique. I wanted to get involved in the citizens. What are they doing? See, in the Dark Knight trilogy, they gave us an in-depth look of what was going on in Gotham City. We got to see the Gotham City's mayor. We got to see the chief of police. They, you know, they exchanged conversations about the events that were going on in Gotham City at the time. We they 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 pointed out the crime rates, the the mafia takeover, so to speak. Even ballerinas from Russia coming over, you know what I'm saying? We, like, we got a sense of what was going on in Gotham City the whole time during the Dark Knight trilogy. Even in the Avengers, we got a sense of the helicarrier. We got a sense of his size, his dynamic, his capability. We got to see the helm, the bridge. We got to see the laboratories. We got to see the weapons uh, facility. We got to see the, the, the holding cell. We got to see Wishbone. I know more about the helicarrier of the Avengers from that one movie than I do about Metropolis and Smallville and Man of Steel. I didn't know where we was at sometimes in Smallville. Where are we? I didn't know where we was at in Metropolis. Like, what street is this? They didn't give us a sense of the setting. I didn't know where I was at, nor I knew when I was at it. Like, this is a, are we in the past or in the future? Like, where are we? Therefore, I did not get a sense, nor did I care about any of those places. So when they show Metropolis ultimately being destroyed, which happens in every Superman incarnation, and I give them props for that. Every Superman incarnation has to depict Metropolis getting destroyed by a superpowered battle. I get that. That's part of the tradition. I'm glad they had that in there. But I didn't care that it was getting destroyed because I didn't establish a feel for Metropolis. I didn't care about it. Why I didn't I care? Because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know who the citizens were. I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know what was going on. So I didn't care that it was getting destroyed. Like, okay, yeah, destroy all that. Blow it up. I don't care. How nobody died during the superpower battles beyond me. And I'm not going to get into that because maybe I missed something. But to be honest, maybe the population, it seems to me the population of Metropolis is just the people that work in the Daily Planet. That's all they focus on. Everybody that I kind of got a sense of in Metropolis worked in the Daily Planet. Just like the only people I got a feel for in Smallville just happened to go to the same school that Clark went to. And they was <laughs> they did a poor execution of trying to get us involved in Pete Ross life. Him at the IHOP. I'm, I'm quite sure the IHOP was purposely done product placement, but it was stupid. Because we didn't care about Pete Ross. 
They didn't make us care about Pete Ross. They were just like, remember Pete Ross? Here he is. Hey, remember Lana Lang? Here he is. Remember Perry White? Yeah, I remember Perry White. Here he is. It's not a reboot. Here, here are the people that you're all familiar with. Now they're in the movie. You satisfied? We made a Superman movie and all your favorite characters are there. Here's Clovers and Stars and Rainbows and here's all your Lucky Charms and Marshmallows right there. Enjoy the cereal. No, no, no. Explain to me who Pete Ross is and why he was bullying Clark. Explain to me who Lana Lang is and why they had that look. Explain to me. Explain to me why Perry White was such a uh, to Lois Lane. Who's Jenny? Who's Woodworm? Where's Jimmy Olsen? I mean, if you're going to have all your favorite marshmallows in the Lucky Charms, at least have the Jimmy Olsen marshmallow. They didn't even have the Jimmy Olsen marshmallow. They had some sort of Woodworm marshmallow. So you're going to sell me a box of Lucky Charms trying to tell me that all the familiar uh, marshmallows are there is just tastier, but you leave out the Jimmy Olsen marshmallow. And replace it with a woodworm marshmallow. What are you? <laughs> even you, even though it wasn't a true reboot, it was a bad review or a revisit because you didn't even have the Jimmy Olsen marshmallow. I'm going to continue on with different aspects of why the man still suck in the following videos. I'm one sip away. Hold on.